everybody doing today? All right. I brought some things you guys might be interested in. Um, so I am the person who gets to go to Owego, New York on a very regular basis. Um, and I'm very lucky to work with an amazing team from Lockheed Martin. Um, they are definitely complex system integrators and um, through our, all of our work, um, we've been able to turn the art of possibility into a functional and working proof of concept. Um, as Kenny told you earlier, I would tell you how it went, so thank you. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Um, so let me uh, tell you a little about what's going on here. It's the green button, I hope. Ah. You may recognize this uh, picture. Uh, Don Bartusiak and Steve Batar have given presentations using a, a variation of this document. Um, we view this as sort of our proposal for what a standards-based, open, secure, and interoperable system might be. Um, we think that there's a lot of uh, value creation here and uh, innovation gets, uh, uh, is made very capable. Now, such an architecture does address some of the, the technical and commercial issues with our current control systems. Um, so I'll point out some points here for those of you who may not have seen this. If you notice in highlight in yellow are all the new items. Um, at the very bottom, we have something we call DCN. You've seen the picture, distributed control node. Um, and this device might run the basic regular, regulatory control, but it also may host other applications as well. Um, at the very top, you'll notice we have a, a high availability, real-time, advanced computing platform we call the RTAC. Um, there again, um, we could run things like procedural automation, supervisory control, advanced control, um, and maybe even basic regulatory control. Uh, in the middle is the real-time bus, and you'll notice that all of our items are peers on this real-time bus. The uh, DCS is not the broker of all data. It is just another peer. And you'll also notice there's no level one through three hierarchy that's very typical in uh, control systems we see today. Um, now, it's not our intent to describe what the control system should look like. It's just to provide a framework which would provide the functionality. So this is not a design. It's a concept. All right, so the ExxonMobil proof of concept has been constructed, programmed, and integrated by an excellent team and highly capable group um, at Lockheed Martin. Um, the ExxonMobil team did provide guidance, direction, and uh, some industry expertise, and the Lockheed Martin people brought their complex system integration capabilities and made the proof of concept happen. So I use that word, make it happen, because it does work. So as we go through the proof of concept, we decided, and you'll see some vendors here, um, we decided to just demonstrate some of the capabilities we envisioned. So you can see we do have an RTAC based on the Wind River uh, titanium controller platform. Um, we use a bunch of DCNs. We have some basic I.O., which we used to talk to, and we have some intelligent I.O., which is there to replicate what the legacy systems provide. Um, all of this hardware and software is connected as peers on the real-time bus um, using open standards communications. So we created this proof of concept with using hardware and software from a variety of vendors um, that were selected through our RFP process in uh, 2017. And uh, we would like to acknowledge and thank those vendors for participating in our proof of concept. All right. Okay. So a little more detail here. The process we chose in the proof of concept is a natural draft fired heater. Um, this is a common device we use in the chemical and the refining industry. Um, and it's very similar to a boiler in many ways. The uh, process control requirement of this device has um, many PID controls. It also uses constraint control. Um, so the um, picture on the left 
is actually the rack of DCNs and I.O. that we use in OIGO New York. The picture on the right happens to be uh, one of the graphics we built in Ignition, the uh, industrial or um, inductive automation. <laughs> um, it's just one of the graphs we did. Um, so I mentioned that we use many DCNs, so let me just explain this a little bit. Uh, we took all the I.O. in the logic and the uh, control pieces like PID and we broke it into parts and we distributed it over more than three dozen DCNs. So while this could all be done on one DCN, we have definitely expanded out and part of that was to s stress the system. Um, so I'll make a comment on processor and network performance. One day one of the Lockheed Martin engineers came up to me and says, we think the process control is running too fast. It, it could be slowed down, it's kind of ridiculous. And they said, well, the team decided we're gonna slow it down, slow it all down. I thought, well, okay, they're gonna tell me how one second loop, all the one second loops have been turned into 10, 30 second loops. So they surprised me. Um, they slowed the whole thing down to the uh, conservative execution speed of 100 milliseconds. So I want to tell you that fast and slow are very subjective terms. That's about as fast as we run anything. Okay, so we tested a, a couple quality attributes with our proof of concept. So the first one I want to tell you about is interoperability. So um, for us, the, we wanted to know if the component could be re, um, So we wanted to know if the two or more components could exchange information as peers using standard-based methods. Now why is this important? Well, ExxonMobil would like to allow the easy integration of best-in-class components without the need for translators or gateways. So let me show you what we've done. So what we did, is we created a control algorithm, and we used a soft controller from ABB, and we used a hard controller, DCN, from NXT Control. We used some basic I.O. from our stall, and we integrated it with the uh, ignition graphics from inductive automation. Now, there are no translators or gateways in this. It communicates using OPC UA and DDS, and we use the IEC 61499 and the IEC 61131 standards to do some of this programming. All standards based. By the way, if anybody wants to know what a, a DCN concept might be, this is an NXT device that we used as a DCN. You can see, small. <clears throat> All right. So another quality attribute we thought about was interchangeability. So we wanted to know if one of the components could be replaced by a different component without modifying the logic. And when I say different component, I mean from a different vendor. Um, so the importance is that ExxonMobil would like to upgrade to leading edge capabilities when it's justified, significantly lower the cost of that replacement, and preserve our investment in the application software. So, we were able to take a Raspberry Pi based DCN concept, looks just like this, that is a Raspberry Pi 3, and we swapped it out for an Intel prototype DCN. I'll just show you something. That's the brain, that's where the wires land. So we were able to do this and we redeployed without changing the logic at all. 
So we started this whole process on a single DCN, and I told you there was over three dozen logical entities when you think about the number of PIDs and the selectors and the various inputs. And we distributed that using interoperability and interchangeability across more than three dozen devices. Um, from, different, from three different vendors and with simple reassignment. We also had to replace a few of the devices along the way. That's where I got these. <laughs> so by using the IEC 61499 based control logic, we could distribute, move, consolidate the logic between the devices from different vendors by simple reassignment with no need to convert, translate, or re-engineer the logic. So, I'll give you a third quality attribute. Portability. For this attribute, we need to discuss two subdivisions of portability. And um, so configuration portability and application portability are the two types I'd like to talk about. Um, configuration portability is when the configuration from one application can be shared and used by another without modification. And the application portability is when an application program can run on a different system and perform the same functions and services with the same configuration. So I'm going to give you an example. So most of us use spreadsheets. So in the spreadsheet example, the configuration would include things like cell contents, calculations, and formatting. The application part is the licensed spreadsheet software loaded onto the computer. So in this case, uh, configuration portability allows you to send that Excel spreadsheet file to someone who's using a non-Excel spreadsheet system, and they can open it and see all your data, just as you would have done it, just if it were at Excel. The application portability is the fact that you can use the same Excel spreadsheet in Microsoft Windows, Apple iOS, or online in the Windows or the Office Live, and they all work the same. So that's, that's the concept. So portability is desirable um, because it allows ExxonMobil to preserve our custom developed configurations and share them from one system to another regardless of the vendor or the platform. So in the proof of concept, we were able to export from a uh, four DIAC engineering tool, which is based on IEC 61499. And then we imported it into NXT Control's engineering tool, and we redeployed that logic without changes to the logic. It, ex it actually exports as an XML file. This exercise demonstrated that configuration portability using uh, different IEC 61499 based control runtimes does work. So another test we did is that we involve moving control logic from Intel prototype DCN to an NX control soft controller in the RTAC and redeployed it without changes to the logic. Basically, we used the same IEC 61499 based runtime application on different processor and OS combinations, and we demonstrated the application portability. So, neither of these portability tests required changes the control logic. So, one additional capability we wanted to demonstrate was the ability, the, the App Store concept. We call it the ability to purchase or produce applications and integrate them into the control environment. So ExxonMobil believes there is a great benefit to allowing innovation and best-in-class algorithms to be used in the control system, and some of them may come from others than the vendor themselves or in their system, their own systems. So to test this ability, we did a couple things. First, we purchased a library of DDS communication software tools from RTI, and then we incorporated them in engineering tools of the NXT control environment, and then we deployed the logic. So now, the PV and set point values can be communicated to the PID using DDS communications. 
So this would be similar to purchasing a statistics add-on for that Excel spreadsheet we were talking about. And your ability to call up standard uh, statistical functions in the cell formulas. So a second test we performed for this uh, application development flexibility was the ability to produce an algorithm using MATLAB with add-ons. And those add-ons can um, generate C code and structured text. So we can encapsulate the generated code into a logic configuration and deploy them. So this is logic you might have written somewhere else. So many of our new hires, they've learned to use tools like MATLAB and other common software languages in their university courses. And they come to our company, and if we could provide them a platform to incorporate this capability they've already learned, they will not have to learn the vendor languages, and they can get started and be productive now. In summary, our ExxonMobil proof of concept has demonstrated that interoperability, interchangeability, portability, and application development flexibility can be achieved using the standards-based open, secure, and interoperable process control architecture. So I'm going to talk to you a little about moving forward now. So the ExxonMobil proof of concept has been successful and worked in the Lockheed Martin lab. And we've had a lot of fun with it. So now what? <laughs> so as you heard this morning, um, we envision this system to achieve technical readiness, readiness by 2021, which means we have several objectives we have to deal with. The first is we're going to encourage others to join and actively participate in the Open Process Automation Forum. The forum needs a balance of users, vendors, suppliers, and system integrators to be a force for positive change in the control system space. Snapshot one is just the beginning. Second, ExxonMobil will be taking the proof of concept technology to an on-process pilot in 2018 and continue exploring more proof of concept ideas. This will be our first step to the path to technical readiness. So lastly, as Kenny mentioned this morning as well, the ExxonMobil is actively seeking collaboration partners for development and field trials and invites others to join us in prototyping and development efforts over the next three years. And you may have heard we have a few people who have signed on. So ExxonMobil operates in very specific industries and processes. So our concerns may not perfectly overlap with companies in other industries. We also feel that our desired quality attributes may not be exactly the same ones that your companies want. We do have an open process automation booth at the end of the conference hall foyer, out where we get our drinks and snacks. So I invite you to stop by and talk to us about joining and participating in the open process automation forum. We can also discuss the development and field trial collaboration possibilities with ExxonMobil. So in closing, I appreciate your interest in our update. Um, the ExxonMobil proof of concept has been successful and we'll be moving forward to that own process pilot. Uh, my other message to you is that the Open Process Automation Forum needs your participation. Uh, I hope that you're now inspired to ask a few questions, encouraged to learn more about our effort and motivated to participate. Thank you very much. <laughs>